for IDM research in Brazil. And, uh, well, I see a lot of young faces here. I've been doing AI for 30 years, so maybe I have a, some different perspectives. But I think we are in a great moment, but, and it's great that it is happening at CHI. But I, uh, one thing I've noticed so far in all this uh, uh, conversations is that there's a lot of, in my view, a lot of confusion about terminology. And I think that's something we have to be really careful about who we call uh, user, who we call expert, and so on. Think, and, and, and when, if I look at the, I, I like this, I sort of create a little bit of nature of what mo how most machine learning systems are structured, because I think it's, it's the, the basics. Where, and uh, what I think it's interesting is that all people here seems to be talking about different aspects of this configuration and different ways to reconfigure this. But more important, that there are different interfaces to be dealt with. And I think this is something that we have to be care very careful in this community to make sure that we are talking about the same interface. We are talking the interface for the domain export and the machine learning system that is not here, because it's not there in most of today's systems, is a different interface from the developer, the machine learning experts, to the machine learning system and end user. So let's be careful. That's one of the messages I had to want to start. Having said that, uh, the, the paper I, I wrote is more uh, sort of a, a dream paper, I would call it. And basically, it goes through two key issues. The first is, when we look at that kind of structure, we see that today, most of the case, domain expert can only provide data, label data, or talk to the developer. And I think that's a major bottleneck for the scale up of AI, that everything has to go through those only two channels. And uh, the second is, if we break that paradigm, I think we open up AI system for something much more powerful, which is to make AI systems with large communities of experts. And I will get to that. But let's first look at the uh, the, the gray side of this. So that's where we are in most cases. Okay? Either experts either talk to developers and they translate stuff into machine learning systems and or they label data to do that. And whoever has been to the winter of AI, we know that does not work. Okay? And we suffered 10 years of, of winter air where People couldn't say they were doing AI without losing their funding. That uh, we have not, we should not make the same mistake. Again. What I think this community or part of this community is interested in doing, and I am interested in doing, and some of us call that machine teaching, which is also it's a lot of different things, is to give domain experts a more direct access to uh, the machine learning system, and maybe a I miss in this graph the conversation between the domain expert and developer, which Vera was talking a lot about, and some other people. But I think we, we need to bring the domain expert closer than directly closer to that. And again, this is not a new idea. This is 1959. This is John McCarthy talking about that. Okay? And he's talking, of course, he thinks that. The expert should talk through logic to the system. Hey, this is 1959. This is 40, 40, no, 60 years ago. Okay? Interesting paper to read. Uh, in, in our lab, we have been exploring some of these ideas. I'm not going to over, but one of the things we are looking into is how uh, we work with conversational systems. We are looking into how people could teach a conversational system by talking to the conversation system, sort of natural mode. And uh, in, in, I'm not going into details, in gray areas you have artifacts, intelligent artifacts that go between the two. That's not this talk, it's uh, uh, another talk. But what I think is important is the moment that you experts, that a physician can do this, that a, a call agent, a call center agent can do this, we can do something much more interesting. 
which is to start working uh, with the system not as individuals or small groups, but as communities. So the way I represent that is I want to bring the, this community of experts to build a machine learning system. Okay? And we know that works because that has happened in, in Wikipedia and especially in, this, in the open source community. So there are ways where a lot, a lot of people can work together and use really complicated systems, okay, like Linux, and using tools like uh, a GitHub. And again, this is not new even for our community. These are two good examples of that. Mel from Carly Mello is a great example of a community building a reading system. Uh, Pi is a great example of something that, well, it was successful, but maybe the social engineering was not so successful. People sabotage the system, which shows that it learns with the community. The good side, it learned maybe the wrong stuff. That's the bad side, but hey, communities are complicated, okay? Uh, what's interesting is it's hard to get it. There are issues that we have to solve this sort of research agenda to get there. We have to deal with contradictions like Gonzalo said. And the community is going to be much bigger. But hey, I cannot see a more contradictory, more a community more full of contradictions than the Bitcoin community. And they work. They build it. It's working. Okay? Uh, the issue that people simultaneously, different people at different places are doing different things with the system, and who knows? what has happened with the whole, again, versioning and all. We, we have solutions. We have to see how to translate those solutions to non-computer people. That's a good, good, good for us here. Uh, the issue of levels, expertise, consistency. There's a whole bunch, and I discussed that in the paper. Okay? Uh, but it's not only bad news. There's also good news. The good news is communities allows uh, much, much more persistence, much more resilience. We saw that in the Linux community, okay? There's the whole issue that sometimes hard problems, you can put a bunch of people together with different points of view to solve the problem. Uh, high quality, we have seen again that again, even in spite of contradictions, both in Wikipedia and uh, the open source. We also have this thing that I think it's very important is diversity is represented from the beginning in this system. It has to deal with the diversity in the broader sense. So mostly here in terms of opinions and but also points of view, culture, it's there. And it's open for people to invade it, which is great for the community of experts. Okay? And these I think are the the, uh, the, the biggest uh, gains that we have. And it may help us to deal with some of the issues we have now, which is some projects don't go much forward often. An expert goes away, the project goes away, or it has to, or you build a psychological tool which is only the canyon, and the other guy say, Oh, this not does not work for me. So it's a way to handle that. And it's a beautiful way to handle it, in my view. So uh, I don't think I have much time left. So I will skip here of a, an example. I, will, I can point it to uh, for anyone interested. But what I think is essential is that to do that, we need to create platforms that enable this kind of community building of community experts. Okay, we don't have don't. Don't expect that you can bring a bunch of physicians and put them in GitHub and say, here's your environment, do it. It's not going to work. So we have to, some ways we have to build villages or proto-villages where people, where the villagers can go there and, and build their own communities and build a, an AI. Okay, and I use this, this, start, this connection with this old African project called, it takes a village to raise an AI because I think it's the same thing. It takes a village to raise a child, a, children, a child. And it's the same thing. But we need to have a village. We need to have a community to have a complex creature, to create a complex creature. Okay? So basically, the two messages I have for, or 
the two of these two, okay, let's not make the same mistake again of getting everything, the expert away from the AI system, and let's expand the, the people who can contribute at the same time to the system. Okay, thank you. I really like the metaphor of, um, of a village, but how do you motivate physicians, for example, to teach an AI to replace them? I mean, um, what's, <laughs> what would be the, the motivation of someone to, to externalize their knowledge in a way um, that is basically making them as an expert? Not uh, maybe they don't want to create something that replaces them, and that's the whole point. Maybe they, they, they want, instead, Instead of us or a company saying, okay, they want, we want to replace no, maybe they will build, build the tools that they need. And I think that's one of the things about going direct, like giving power to the end user in this case, which also the developer, is that they decide what's important for them. And I think we saw that at, uh, at the, the Linux case. I mean, of course there is leadership and all that, but I think that's the answer. Maybe one comment to build on that. Maybe not necessarily about replacing the skill, but teaching the system so that it can complement what you do. So think about it takes 10 years for a human to be a doctor, but if you do 10 years of training for one AI system, then you have 100 doctors, right? And then they can work together for example. Yeah, they know, what, they know their pains more than any machine learning expert can ever do. We have a question back I think he is. Oh, yes. So, yeah. What is the, why is it really just like make it fail if like the, the domain is for, is for cannot actually directly just you know, manipulate or make, make a model do it? Well, I mean, most domain experts cannot why think in terms of uh, like uh, data only first. That's a good reason. I mean, if you're working with physicians and say, uh, Okay, is this right or wrong? And he's always going to tell, oh, this is maybe is right, if that, blah, blah. It, I think that the, the machine, like the machine learning systems of today, like probabilistic neural, require interaction in a way that they are not equipped to deal with, and they cannot, and uh, at the same time, they cannot uh, uh, understand why how that that. that The results are uh, are surfaced based on previous people's search, and it takes into other contextual information and so on. Is that part of what this is, or is uh, that's a, more than that? We could say, okay, if I if data is collected with uh, hundred thousand experts, oh, this is a community. Well, it's uh, for me, or in the case of Google, or I think a community has power over the, the decision-making process. That's, in, I'm thinking communities in that strong sense. Of course, of course, a hundred labelers in, uh, in a mechanical turk is a community in the loose sense of it. But here I'm trying to use the strong sense in the sense that a community that is able to define their own goals, manage the process, that's an empowered community. Let's put it this way. Okay, not like Google does. And Google does a great job for search. I'm not, but it's if it's collecting my data, imprinting their values on top, and giving me back as a tool. Uh, I'm not, this is not any part of the community. And I've talked about that. We have time for one last question. But isn't the power of a community to be able to develop ethics and values? You just mentioned mm -hmm. it. How would that work? Would it be an implicit thing? Or I think what we saw. Again, the thing so knowledge you were talking about, does this include this high level thing or is it just by providing training and so on? I, I, I don't know, transport my values. I think what we saw in this good case in open source like uh, Bitcoin or Linux is that 
that required a whole structure of power management and value discussion and all that, which sometimes is divisive over any community or, or not. And, and, and I think that's what we have to bring to the systems. All this complexity of people saying, oh, this, this is the wrong line of uh, thinking in terms of psychology. And then discuss, but we saw that, that they can get solved that stuff. Sometimes by, even by splitting projects. But they solve it. It works. So the problem is that they don't have a platform. I think that's the, the main issue. That's the thing we have to think as a community, by the way. Okay. The platform was the best uh, to introduce your own ethics. No, a platform where they can talk about their own ethics. Oh, okay. And they can build using their own ethics. Of course, I'm not naive and saying, okay, you put a platform, of course, you're making some decisions, and, but you cannot stop one without the other. Okay, thank you. I'll be. Thank you again.